Hello, welcome to Steve McDonald's Arts and Crafts and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little coffee table. I need one and so I thought I would make one and I actually found this piece of board I didn't realise I had. I painted it a long time ago. It's a piece of plywood and it's quite a nice size. It's been painted with some paint and it's got different paint both sides. It's quite dusty and it's quite dirty. So what I'm going to do before I do anything else to it is give it a bit of a clean using some soapy water. I'm not going to repaint it because I don't think I need to. And I'll just leave that to settle in there for a few minutes just in case there's any oil or grease on it. I've wiped that dry with a lint-free cloth and now what I'm doing is I'm putting my base colour down and what this is is a titanium white mixed in with my resin. Now I'm not one of these people that believes you have to put gallons and gallons of resin down at the beginning of a pour like this to create cells because I just don't believe you do. All that happens when you do that is loads of resin flows over the edge and you end up wasting lots and lots of resin and it's costly enough as it is so what i do is i pour my resin on like this and then mix it over and then add my other colors on top of that and i still find i get cells if you want large cells then add a little bit more of the base color than i have but don't do it so it flows all the way over i'm using the j diction mica powders now and I love them, they're so vibrant and they really do maintain their colour. And again, I've not covered the whole thing with this, I've just done enough to be able to spread it over. Now when I'm spreading it over, I'm not touching the actual board underneath, I'm just layering this over the top of the titanium white that I've already put down. Because I find that that works really well. And this is not a thin resin, so it's not going to just soak through anyway, it's going to give you a really good result. Now I'm going in with my blue and I just do random patterns now because there is no rhyme or reason of how this is going to turn out and now I'm adding a little bit of black. I do love black and gold together and I think it really shows off as well all the other colours. It's a colour that actually really benefits what's going on. Now I take my heat gun which must be about 40 years old. I must invest in a new one as soon as I can because it would be nice to be have one that you can control the heat on. And what it's about now is actually evening the actual warm warming the resin up rather than just heating in one patch because what you'll find is you'll get a much nicer cure and you'll get a more even cure that way. I meant to say I am actually using the J Diction Epoxy Resin for this. It's a brilliant resin, really good quality, dries lovely and hard and I've put the link to that in the description below. So going round, using my gun just to move it around a little bit at this time and to ensure that I'm trying to heat it up as evenly as possible. Because once it's all kind of warmed up, don't burn it, keep moving. You don't want to be burning your resin at all. Because you'll find one, what will happen then is it will cure and that bit will cure a lot quicker than the rest. And it will create like a crinkly pattern in it. And it will spoil it. It won't have that real nice clear shine. So going around, I have speeded this up. I'm not actually working at this speed. <laughs> if only I could, that would be amazing. And now this is where I think, right, I'm going to start to move around certain areas to see what happens. And as you can see in the bottom of this picture, the cells are already starting to form. And that's because there are several layers and it's heated up and the bottom layers are coming through and the top layers are going down. And there's no mica powder in that first layer either, and I find that that helps as well because you've got a different density of resin going on, which will help you with your cells. So moving this freely across here, I would like to just say a quick thank you to all my members. The membership is growing brilliantly. We have such a laugh and we have a great community, and there's lots of additional help and support that goes on in there as well. So if you'd like to become a member, the link for that is in the description below and you too can be one of the elite people. So again, still heating this over. As you can see, I'm not doing it in one place at one time. And now I kind of look at it and think, yeah, okay, I think it needs a little bit more black in it. And this black will actually merge in quite well as I start to move this around and as you can see I'm actually putting this on in quite a thin stream because I don't want to have too big a blobs in it and that'll help it to blend in. 
Thank you to everyone that got me a coffee. Really appreciate it. Your names are coming up on my coffee board now. And every penny I get from coffees is reinvested back into the channel to buy products and to be able to make these videos. So thank you very much for that. So now just going over that black resin because that's going to be cooler than the resin that was already there and had been heated up. So going around following those lines and then allowing that to blend in. I also thought as well, a lot of people have mentioned they didn't realize I had a second channel, and I do. I do lots of different crafting projects. A couple of those you'll see at the end of this one when you see the table finished. It's a really fun channel. I do lots of different crafts on there, so please check that out and have a look. I'd be love to see you over there. So now going through this, and now I'm heating a little bit more in certain places to try and get those seals I mean cells, not seals, <laughs> sorry about that, and moving this around. And then once I'm kind of feel, yeah, that's blended in enough, then I will leave it alone because as this cures, it will still move around a little bit more until it gets to that real thicker gel stage. And I don't want it to overblend. I don't want it to have any muddy areas in it. So just going of being quite careful now. And then I will leave this to cure up for about 24 hours. Well, now this tabletop is finished, I'm really pleased with it. I love how it's come out. I love the pattern, I love the cells, and it was so easy to make as well. And it's on a nice thick board, so it's not going to warp. I just need to put the legs on. Now, the type of legs that I'm going to use are these. They're brilliant legs, they're not expensive. I will link them in the description below. And they're very sturdy, and they come with little caps on as well. Now, when you're doing this, make sure that when you turn it over to put your legs on, that you're actually turning it over onto something that isn't going to scratch the surface. This has been curing now for probably about a month, so it's not gonna scratch the surface. Additionally, if you wanna get rid of these little bumps, then you can. I don't tend to bother. I'm not gonna see them, and they're not gonna be a nuisance to me. All I do is I make a decision on where my legs are gonna go, which is something that I'm not really good at. <laughs> my legs go all over the place. You should see me when I dance. So I'm happy with that. That's fairly good enough for me to put my legs in. And now what I'll do is I will counter drill the holes for these legs. Firstly, I don't want to drill too deep because I want to make sure that these screws don't go through to the top. But also, I don't want to split any wood or cause any problems. That's really simple to do. All I do is I mark up using a pencil where I want the screws to go. So I'll put two in the front and one in the back. Now this is only a coffee table. If you want to put more in, you could, but this will be enough. And to counter drill them, I'm just using my flexi shaft and I put a bit of tape on there so I know that I don't go too deep because the last thing I want to do is drill into my resin top. And I found counter drilling with the flexi shaft much easier. It's a lot easier to control. I've also cut out some foam, some of these little foam backs for the legs. Now these don't actually come with it, but I've just got some foam and I like the way that these sit in there and stop any vibrations and any moving around as well. And then it's just a case of popping your leg on where you know it has to be, getting out your drill or a screwdriver, either one will work, putting in your bit, your little screw and drilling them down. So I'm gonna go around and finish these off and I'll show you what the table looks like completely finished. But that's all finished now and I'm really pleased with how it's come out. I've put a couple of items on it that I made on my other channel. So check those out, they're really easy to make. I love how the tops come out and the legs look really grand as well. Let me know in the comments what you think of this table and if you've made any tables, I'd love to hear about it. I mean, the pattern on this is really quite vibrant, lovely lot of cells and obviously nice and bright. This is in fact going in my living room. Be sure if you want to learn more about resin to check out the video that's coming up next because resin is a very flexible product and you make so many great things out of it. So check that out. I look forward to seeing you over there. Please boot that like button. It really does help my videos get out there and it also tells me whether people like the videos that I'm making and want to see more of that type of video as well. And if you'd like to get a hold of any of the things that I've used today in this video then I will put all the links in the description below. Take care. Enjoy your resin. Bye.